uh, essay, uh, interesting essay in the Theosophical Library wasn't copied. So we don't have anything to do this evening. Therefore, let's do. What do you want to explore without a text? Where do you want to go? Again, the Damascus, which should have been copied, wasn't copied. And therefore, uh, obviously, it's not here. So let's just pick up a dialogue on some subject that interests you, and let's see whether we can play with it. Look at it. He's got one. Go ahead. I was thinking of this yesterday, but I, I, I have to remember what it was. I was like, the next time this opportunity comes up, I have the, uh, I have the topic. I what just, it says? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I have one, too. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. No, I had one a couple of days ago with the same rationale, and I can't think of it now either. What about the myth of Ur? There's something about what? that. Myth of Ur. Myth of Ur? Yeah, what Is there a myth that? of Ur? <laughs> well, I haven't been, I haven't been through that here yet. <laughs> okay. I, I, I remember the, the last thought I had was, huh. um, yeah, so I can, I can recall that. Good. If the Greeks looked at uh, fate and destiny as these... Fate two, and destiny. If they looked at them as two different things. Of course. Uh, and if living well is achieving your, your destiny, and uh, I guess living in line with the path of Logos is achieving your fate, then is it, how do we know that you will die well if you live well, or is there no connection at all? Wait a minute. How will you know? If a philosopher is training to die well, yeah. how do we know that living well, how do we know you can't live according to your fate and then still die well? Uh, that could be. Let me see. Could you repeat what he, what, what he just said? You correct yes. him if he misses it. Yes. Uh, so, uh, well, the, his question is, how do, we, how, do you, how do we know that you can't die well if you haven't lived well, i.e. lived according to one's fate, rather than that, according to one's destiny? That's the way I took it. Okay, is that right? That is... Uh, he put yeah, it negatively. I think, he, I think he did the negative. He put it negatively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> put it negatively. Can you restate it? Yeah, you turned it around. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think he's saying, why get free of your problem? What, what good is it to get free of your problem? Or can you die well still with your problem? Right. Okay, try it. If you die, if you live well, and Go ahead. Could you still die poorly? Could you still die poorly? Oh, I don't know what that means. Or well, uh, bad. If you die poorly. Does that mean you're broke? <laughs> oh. No. Pathological <laughs> death. Huh? <laughs> I guess I I mean to die well in terms of what whatever the philosophers mean when they say to die well. I assume that there is also not doing that, or they wouldn't need to practice it. So whatever the opposite of dying well is. That's what I call dying. Oh, oh, oh. You mean actual oh. dying as opposed to making those well, choices? Well, these are incompatible. This, this, this could not be the case. Mm. So if you live well, you die well. Because? If you live yeah. poorly, you die poorly. <laughs> no, it's not the case because Proclus died, died a pitiful being. But now, he had, why, he had a beautiful why, can, why can that, why can I make that statement? That's exactly the question I had. <laughs> Barbara wants you to answer. I asked. I expected I some answer from you instead of a question. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Add, add to it. Go ahead. Add to it? Well, it suggests that there is or is not a relationship between living well and the education of, that you would get from the, the guy. Remember the valuable guy that you need to meet who's going to allow you to make that choice among all the live, you know, Yes. Conditions of lives. So in the myth of her, there is that section where someone functions in that way. Quite so true. Go if ahead. Living well would give you a similar education to one you would receive from that guy. Then at that point, you'd be able to make a good choice, which may or may not have anything to do with dying poorly. Because dying poorly may have to do with the actual moment of death, the separation of soul from body, which is 
what Daniel sounds like he's going towards, and that's the question. Are you going towards the actual moment of death and the yoga of separation, separating the soul from the body as described in, for example, the Phaedo, and how it plays a role in the Papalogos versus Logos of, that we've been discussing? Yeah, that's a yes, kind of. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know what you mean when you shake your head. What does that do to this statement? From what, from what was just said Very good. by Barbara. I'll put it back in your original terms. Well, I guess I would like her to uh, to maybe say it a little slower and uh, ex there were a lot of things that I think that I'm like, yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I don't know. Maybe I don't okay. know the details I'll ask of those things. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Well, um, at first I thought that Daniel was referring to um, the relationship between living well and the life after death, which is why my mind went to the education suggested by the the uh, that element of Book 10 of the Republic. But in his subsequent comment, it seemed like he was referring to the actual moment of death when there is, there is a yoga described in the Phaedo of separating the soul from body, which is said, which Socrates suggests might or might not be helpful to practice before you actually drop dead. And how that would be related to this living well is another question as well, is it not? So it seems like there's several right. different so, yeah, questions. Yeah, I guess I want to know both. I want to know the answer to both. <laughs> Did you hear the answer? <laughs> he wanted both. He wanted to cover both. <laughs> given, a given a choice. But that wasn't the issue. The issue is whether if you said it slowly, he could agree or not. That's the first one. Then we'll take the both. Isn't Go he ahead. agreeing to Did whether you, he Did you find that helpful? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you no longer have a question about what you right. said? Right. Mm -hmm. What does that do to your issue? Well, it um, it makes it more difficult. We have two we have two things to answer now. Uh, Which one did it answer of the two? Any of them? Uh, I don't Both know if it answered either, but it clarified the question. Wait a minute. If it answered neither, then no, no, it answered neither, but it it gave the question precision. Yes. Mm. A and it, it it went from a single question or. Uh, a single question to a multi to a three part type maybe question. So therefore, it was here. helpful to learn all of that, but you still have the issue. Yeah. Yes. Now, right? He wasn't learning that though, was he? He. W I was just suggesting. I wasn't teaching him, giving him any content. Well, I was suggesting scope. If, if you weren't, I'll, I'll, I just said that. <laughs> I'll take credit for it. Okay. And you'd still say, in no way does that answer that particular problem. Right. Either way. Okay. Can we get poorly defined? I, I have a suggestion. You, you were asking how you could say that it's impossible, Th those two can't go together, living well and dying, dying poorly. Oh, that's, that's so without you saying why you would say that, I, I'd suggest that it's because living well is inseparable. Uh, living well is inseparable from understanding how living well connects with dying well. Go ahead, and how do you die well? <coughs> I'll write it over here. Well, you have to... Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> He's pushing up daisies. Go ahead. Well, I, I... I hold what Plato holds and what Socrates thinks, that to... to to die well, you have to live well throughout your life, and that's a practice of dying and death. How is that the practice of dying and death? To live well? 
you used an expression I thought maybe you would add something more to it. Right. That, yeah. that, uh, what does dying well mean to you? Di dying well. What does dying well mean to me? It means rec understanding and knowing what the nature of death is. Well, what is it? Phronesis. Ah, you always use that word whenever I can, too. <laughs> well, the, the, the grasping of phronesis. No, how does that help with the question, please? To die well is understanding death. And, and knowing. <coughs> no, understanding and knowing. The nature of death. death. Go ahead. The nature of death. The nature of death, which is what? Go ahead. It's the most brilliant, it's, it's being. It's being. Yes. Okay. Does that answer it? Does that answer it? Death is being? That's what he said. <laughs> Tell him. I if I know. say it, you'll be upset. <laughs> you, he won't be. Go ahead. I don't know if death is being. Death is. This is the ancient question, which is, how do you know when an answer answers a question? So. Well, see, I have a problem. I, I, I got a problem because I, I, don't, I don't live well. So I, I, I feel challenged to talk about something that I don't do. So. Well, then don't say anything. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I'll right? I mean, if, you, gladly. if I mean, you're canceling yourself out, is that what but, you're doing? No, you're saying, pull me out of this. Well, I don't live well. That, that, that's... Something okay. that's coming up right now for me. It's like yeah. I, I, I'm like yeah, okay. talking about this and I don't do it, you know. But okay. So it, I mean, so like, we'll pass I'm, no, I'm willing to talk about it still, just as long as everybody knows, you know. It's like with an asterisk, proviso. I don't do it. <laughs> well, I mean, what's true is true. Well, you could still die well. Try we're that still, <laughs> we're still interested in knowing whether you think mm -hmm. what he has said answers the question. You made the point. No. No. What do you? Well, hold on. I, I wonder about this. What do you? What do you think of this idea that uh, understanding and knowing the nature of death as a practice of philosophy uh, that that's requisite for living well? That right. So in that sense, that a person cannot uh, say that they and be totally sincerely honest and have integrity with themselves that they live well. Uh, unless they uh, include this aspect of contemplating the nature of death, coming to an understanding and knowledge of it as a practice of, <coughs> as a practice of dying and death. <coughs> well, uh, it's up to you, John. But I think there are, there are other people that aren't in the class of philosophers that also live well. They live well for musicians. And so they probably aren't doing that they're just living they're well for musicians. Well? I think they'll die well for musicians. <clears throat> Hopefully, I don't know. How about the exorbitantly rich dude? He certainly lives well. <laughs> right. I don't know any. <laughs> he well, can spend money anytime he likes or, or but that, cheap that, it. I mean, that, that this, the word is, this, we could say they live well, but maybe some do and some don't because we're looking more for fate and destiny. Mm. So yeah, some in the defense that, of the David in defense of the exorbitantly rich guy who buys whatever the fuck he wants. Um, I think I live pretty well, but kind of. But I live between you. I live in if. I have the if. If it's nothing, I'm fine because I'm just you know I'm doing well. But if if it is something, um, you know, the hell that I imagine most people are living in right now. So it's got to be a whole lot better than this. And if it's all mine, you know, I'm still got my eye on the prize and I'm not sweating the little stuff. And that's kind of what he's saying, you know. Keep your eye on the good and, 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 it's beautiful. and move and, and do, your, do your best works here. Fucking death hits me on a crosswalk somewhere. Um, I know I did the best I could and on the other side. Of it. Hmm. it could be great. How does that help? Does it? Come on. Um, 
it's it's moving, and I I agree. I don't know if it answers my I don't know if it answers the question. Well, wait a minute. You don't know whether something answers the question. That is a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of by necessity a no. It doesn't. Well, I mean, if he, if he doesn't know if it does, then it doesn't. It would seem to me, <laughs> because if it answers the question, then there's a sense he should have that sense that the question has been answered to some degree, in part or in whole. If he can't answer whether it has been answered or hasn't been answered, then it hasn't been answered. It would seem to me. I would agree with that, yeah. And therefore? It doesn't answer the question. It doesn't answer the question. Right. Ah. So far, we haven't gone beyond ourselves. What about the origins of the good, the beautiful, and the uh, temperance and from justice? The question. Never mind. Go Sorry. Ahead. The reason I wanted, it's a dialogue, so you have to talk up. Right, a point was just made. What do you think of it? I, I wasn't listening because I, I, was, I, I just recalled that David, uh, I, I, I wasn't sure that Danny had answered my question before David started talking. So, well, okay, they missed your point. Yeah, train's gone by. Yeah, and now he'll listen. I you promise. <laughs> my question is, uh, at least my thought on this is that we haven't gone back to the source, which all of the philosophy we have looked at has always done that. And you have to start with the good, the beautiful, the temperance, the just. Oh yeah, I did can we that. can we say that at a point of death that within ourselves we know, because knowing is it, not belief, not ideas, but do we know that these things that have been uh, discoursed, the beautiful, the just, do we know that this is who we are through knowing this? Do we know it? If you know that, then I believe you die well, no matter what the yeah. state of your being is. If you know these things, this is the philosopher, then you're living well and... It doesn't matter how you die. Then it doesn't matter. No. Does that answer your question? But if you were doing this, would, would it... it sure, it may not matter, but would you be dying poorly, though, is the no, issue? You, no. Well, okay. That's why I said I need that's to good. define poorly. Okay. Is that a physical okay. position poorly or a okay. mental position okay. poorly? Is it the psyche of the spirit? What's poorly? Understanding and knowing the nature of death, uh, if that's going to equate living well, then it better also mean happiness. I mean, this has got to be real happiness. Not happiness you go in and out of, but continuing. Okay. Did that help? It, it helps further define what we mean by living well. But we're still looking for that But we link. still want to know. The link, yeah. Why? He's got that, now yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Still open. Right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Well. Uh, you know what we ought to do? We ought to drop dead. Yeah, right away. Somebody gets the Who wants the ball? Get the Kool-Aid. Okay. All right. We need a ball All right. Here. <clears throat> now what? Not I. Now what? Let's do it. Okay. And then what? Get in a nice position. Right? And we'll do it. Number one. The idea of the soul in Plato <clears throat> is that the soul is throughout the body because it allows you to be in touch with whatever is in your body that is alive, right? You can ex yeah. Whatever you experience, that's the extent of your body. Uh-uh. Since you're able to experience whatever it is, that's the extent of your soul. First principle. Second principle. Right? Dying is a practice. It is a practice. For true philosophy is the practice of death. It's the practice of death and dying. Two things. Practice of death and dying. How do you do it? Let's do it. 
All right, right now, everybody, right? Right? Do you know how to do it? He says in the Thedo, you have to, hey, you have to pull the soul, which is dispersed throughout the body. You have to bring it all together. So therefore, there can be a separation. That's the th that's the practice. Do it. Come on, make it become. You feel your come on, you feel your body all over. Come on, right now, feel the body. Okay, now can you practice this? Can you <coughs> kind of take, see what you're going to do? Bring it together into a unity. Right? Bring it together into a unity. That's one scattered throughout the body. Visualize it. That's right, visualize it. This is the practice. This is the practice. Now, so what? Well, that's the separation of the soul from the body is, is the definition of death. That's the definition of it. This is the practice. If you don't practice it, you ain't doing philosophy. This is pure, true philosophy. Nothing else is. This is the practice of dying and being dead. But what's death? Hey, look here. If this takes place, what do you encounter? The nature of ultimate reality. Or, though it's mis if any word is misplaced, it's this word, being. That's the goal of philosophy. You separate yourself from the body, you encounter the nature of ultimate reality. And it experiences the separation of the soul from the body. Do it right now. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's a practice. It's a yoga. And you know what? If you, to the degree that you pull that off, you know what you're doing? You're practicing dying. To the degree that you succeed, that's death. What you encounter, the nature of ultimate reality. Hey, if you pull this stunt off before you drop dead, <laughs> there's nothing to fear about death. Since you've already experienced, the, through the practice of dying, the separation of the soul from the body, which is the nature of death, and therefore you already know what's going to happen with the separation of the soul from the body. Vision of the nature of reality. <laughs> Perhaps another way of stating it is that. What? <clears throat> perhaps another way of stating it is that. I didn't hear you. Another way of stating it, perhaps, is that you're turning away from becoming, the realm of becoming to the realm of yes. being. But yes. this experience. So, yeah, yeah, looking, experiencing everything through the senses is experiencing the nature of becoming. Yeah. But this experience, um, that could take place once in a person's life. And then they can move on and stay with the realm of becoming and never well, come back to it, which isn't the same. Of course it can happen once yeah. in a person's life. But you know what? Uh, uh, it's likely if you have touched it, you might want to go back and take another peek. So it has to become a <laughs> continuous practice. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> get, get it, man. Get in it. <laughs> it. It has to be a continuous practice. Pardon me? It has to be a continuous practice. You have to contemplate this. Uh, to some degree, yeah. You have to go back more than once. You can't just turn aside from it. You have to continue it and go deeper. Why, why, do, you, why do you have uh, reservations about that? Why, why did you well, say... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did, would you answer that? No. Nope. Give it to him. Yeah. Well, you, you said to some degree in, in response to it being a continuous practice. So uh, it seems appropriate to the ask The point you. that was being made, was it not, is that it's a continuous practice. I was thinking of sometimes you might be doing something that you wouldn't be doing that. Yeah, to clarify. 
but it's something that you would return to. No, no. It, it's not something mm -hmm. that, my See, point is, it's not something you would discard once you've had an initial experience and not come back. Practice to. means it's a suit. Something you repeatedly do. That's the way it's described in the Phaedo. It's a practice. It's a habit. It's a practice. And I think the point you're raising is, is it enough to have one glimpse or one look or one participation? No. And I was choking and I, I was saying, well, I imagine if one encountered it, you might want to go back and take another look. Once or twice. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> but that's the practice of philosophy as stated in Plato. Uh, true philosopher. True philosopher. Well, oh, that's what he calls it. Not what I call it. That's what he calls it, true philosopher. This is a true philosopher. See, now, that now experiencing this, uh, Beauty, being, eternal, many words you can put on it, L luminous light of being, all kinds of things. From that you can make certain distinctions, hey, the mind can make, the mind can make distinctions in this, see, curiously enough, and the distinctions you make become the basic elements in philosophy, because in that encounter, hey, it is the most beautiful. Hey, you know what? You discover, hey man, it's just. Everything is just. Right, 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 just, right, right. Hey, unchanging. Hey, unchanging. Wow. These are, unfortunately, some people call them ideas, that Plato is involved in the idea of participation in ideas. That's bullshit. That's just absolute foolishness. What it is is, in this experience, you can infer from that experience these ideas. It's not participating in the ideas. That's total scholarly nonsense. Participating in this, from which you can then conclude certain things about it, but you never exhaust the content of the experience. But if if someone is trying to practice that, <clears throat> then the question may arise: Are there problems or issues that arise as you oh yes to oh that's what's wonderful about it yeah so that makes it a much more oh, complicated yeah. Yeah. proposition than as you try to do this oh boy. Doubts, fears, worries, troubles, tangents. <laughs> so is that also a part of practicing true philosophy? Sure. Dealing with those issues? Yeah. Or coming to an understanding of them, or exploring them, but, and so forth. That's absolutely true. In this practice, then undoubtedly, right, a whole bunch of Tangents, fears, worries, recollections of things undone, all of it, they come crashing in. <clears throat> that's right. And that's another game of philosophy dealing with this. But this is direct, this is the goal. These are the difficulties one engages in, one has to face. No. But you can't deal with one without the other. My Uncle Louie did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Jeriki question, right? There is a certain one. But I have a one, two. different question. Yeah, um, but that's, why, that's the one reason why everybody is arguing with each other, because like, some people like, let's say Kant would say, let's take our fears and our distractions and, and we're going to carry that into the one. Or, um, you know, some Buddhists would say, okay, let's take all that energy and just carry it right into the one. So it's a gathering together of your bits, right? And you're going to choose your bits to go with you. 
And you know, the people who spend their life, you know, reading Plato, they're gathering together a different set of bits to put put forward. They're grabbing ideas and they're grabbing, you know, justice and the good and, and how to live a life with that. And you know, so the gathering together is a great thing. And I agree, let's go there. But um, uh, which bits are you going to put first? Are you going to put those ideas first so that when you get there, you can recognize those? Uh, is that going to make? Is that the, why we do this? Why we sit here and we read Plato, or is it because um, you know, we, you know okay. if you go there, you'll get that anyways? No, get that so from just when for you go there, when you get all of Plato anyways. Okay, let me say something. It's not Plato. It's in Plato. Okay. Hey, it's in Buddhism. It's in yoga. All spiritual experiences can be understood using this model. So which bits? Huh. Yeah, good. And therefore, it's, it's, uh, he, what he does with it, though, is that he links it with a whole bunch of other things, and therefore it becomes philosophical, as it were, right? which is what we're stepping into. But that when I say this isn't Plato, I mean it's not uniquely Plato, it's part of any spiritual tradition. And matter of fact, any profound experience, what is this, another way of, another way of <laughs> describing this, is letting go. Dropping it all. Right, well, if you want to put it negatively, is that right, Julie? Is that right, Julie? I don't know. Louder? I don't know. Ooh, do you mean you never played the game of meditation? Yeah, meditation, yeah. But I don't know about the fear and the words. The hey, oh, those are the To get into... Pre- Whatever profound state of mind you entered into, how did you yeah. do it? By letting go. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he is putting more to it. He's saying in that letting go, this is what happens. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's, who's the he? I had a question about the uh, description at the beginning of I didn't hear you. Excuse I have me. A, I have a question about the description at the beginning of Book Six, where they talk about the philosopher. The, what distinguishes him is that he is in constant contemplation of the bright, of the shining paradigm, and in contemplation of it, yeah. he produces um, laws of the beautiful, the just, and the good, where there are not adequate ones or right. And yes, right. you're moving into the Republic, and in the Republic. The goal, the goal in the Republic of a true philosopher is to be able to remember this. What does that mean? Recall it. And it. Back it back. That's a practice. Yeah. That's the okay. second practice in Plato with this experience. Okay. Because that sound begins to sound more continuous at that yes. point. Yes. Then right? it's continuing from the Phaedo. You want to pick up I, the Republic the state, of the true If he's in constant contemplation of it, then he's, it would seem like he's not going in and out of it. It seems that you're not going through that. In and out of it. You're not going in and out of it at that point. Well, yes, because in the Republic, uh, is, is it not the case that this person has, as it were, through practice he's developed a bright shining pattern in the soul. Therefore, he is no longer okay, doing well, he's no this. Longer. Okay. But to, to intensify that, he says the, the goal <coughs> is remember it, remember, recall. Mm-hmm. And then this, therefore, is the basis for all the judgments he makes about what is beautiful, just, and good in the society and within his own soul. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's a further development of this, mm-hmm. quite true. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. Just to clarify, what you just said is through his experience, he then has a bright, shining pattern in his soul? Is that, what, is that from the recollection or from the experience? I'm not sure I got your question. How does the bright, shining pattern in one's soul Uh-oh. come about? Oh, 
pulling this off because doing this, you then recall. This is why he says true philosopher has a good memory. It's not a memory of this stuff. It's a memory of this stuff. So through the recollection of them. reality. Yeah. 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 Recollecting it. Yeah. Way on the back in the bleachers. Well, my, my question is more on the Greek word. Oh, oh wait a minute. Two other. Go ahead. No, no, go right ahead. That had to do with the separation, the Greek word separation. And then artistically, by Picasso, it gets portrayed as the body floating, or the soul floating up to the ceiling and looking down at the body. And, and yet, in some ways, that, that image is cool, but it doesn't no, quite fit. That's right. It doesn't so my yeah, question hung on right. the word separation. Yeah. This is not in not in space and time. Right. Correct. But he does say to separate as far as possible. So there is a sense in which hmm. that while it's not I was just saying the, hmm. the the further passage for that is to separate as far as possible the soul, right? From the body. So there is a sense not of going the soul going up to the ceiling. Right. There's not that kind of a motion. But I don't know that we can ignore the idea of separation, right? To accustom it to collect itself as far as possible, right, is pretty much the quote in the Phaedo, right? So, see, that's the, see, that's the difference between Plotinus and this section in Plato. Mm, which is? In Plotinus, this is the realm of <coughs> ultimate reality. <coughs> uh, this experience. And he says, the soul it is not, you do not have to do much since there is already a participation of the highest part of the soul already in this. And therefore the task is to Plotinus or Plato are you talking about? Now this is Plotinus. Plotinus. Right. As far as you, as far as it is possible, doesn't have the same image. So that that's more distant. And the question is uh, whether he means the experience as far as possible, or whether this person can do it as far as it is possible for them to do it. To do it exactly so. so. Uh, because don't they in the Republic suggest that it's the highest part of the soul that would be making the connection, so to speak, to call it that for, for a second, or, or having that experience, right? That's it's right. Through and the that's the time is, is. right. Also, right? Yeah. The Alcibiades. And the Alcibiades, but specifically um, time is. So, uh, he calls this, another name for this, he says it's purification, to purify, right? And just to, therefore, there's no point of dying poorly, you know the nature of death. Well, just um, in this practice, the key is also to bring it into a unity, not just to separate out of the body as far as one is capable, but to also bring the soul into a unity at the same time. I'm not with you. Do it again. Um, if I remember. I remember the sentence correctly. It's to bring the soul into a unity and to separate yes. from the body as much as possible. That's right. That's Plato. Right. right. So the second key to that is the unity, bringing the soul into a unity. It's not yeah. just a matter of separating from the body mm -hmm. and nothing else. There's that other component of bringing it into a unity. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I've got the exact quote that helps to see what the yeah. function of that unity is to accustom the soul to collect itself together out of all parts of the body so that it may exist alone by itself apart from the body both now and hereafter. Okay, so there isn't a word unity. So, no, no. To accustom the soul to collect itself together into a unity out of all parts of the body, oh, okay. Okay. but with a purpose, so that it may exist alone by itself apart from the body both now and hereafter. So then the, uni the unification is a precondition. For that's, that's the way I took it. <coughs> Given that, that's what you're saying. Given that full recollection. See, 
And he's saying that the reason that this presupposes a purgation is that all of these recollections, when one is trying to do this, may interfere with us. That means fantasy land, daydreams, worries, fears will block this. And therefore, before this is described, he has many other different kinds of death in the Phaedo that precedes this. This is the last and the ultimate kind. So, um, Different kinds of death. Sir? Kinds. kinds. W what are the different kinds of death? <coughs> Since you were in the Phaedo from your, the point you just made, yes, there are different kinds of death before this is described. Oh, okay. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Oh, right, no, no. So different kinds of de uh, states of death and dying described. How will you know? By reading the book. Well, at least you'll know what he says. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I recall that. I was just wondering, wondering uh, I, I didn't think I understood your point, but now I got it. So. That's, that, listen, we go for that. <laughs> I know. Here I go again. Um, so there's like a lot of us struggling and some of us, you know, they say they can't go all the way and they get a glimpse and some of us get right up there. And uh, so it's ultimately there's going to be a bunch of guys who do that. And I just kind of wonder what they did for fun after, after they, you know, they, do they come back and do the same thing they were doing before or do they all want to run over and open the book of Plato and get, get, get the vocabulary and the, the distinctions and start practicing that? Or, um, is that the only way to get there, or um, is that a natural outflowing? What, what do these guys do for fun? Well, let me get responses to that, okay? Try it before I jump in. Drink beer. Okay. Barbara, you just re re had your hand up? I had my hand up, yes. I believe he does that for fun. I was saying he does that for fun, among other things, right? Because it's it's fun, <laughs> right, Bradley? Where's Bradley? <laughs> Hi, Bradley. Where's Bradley? Sure. Bradley, yes. What to Bradley? Yes, I agree. Thank you, Bradley. <laughs> so, we, so I mean, there's that's one answer. As David knows, and we know of David through knowing his history. David, however, is what? Stone. Playing coy or what? Stone. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's right? fun. And if it's fun, well, he shoes. was asking what would you do for fun after you've done that, and I was thinking that you might do more of it for more fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's probably better than drinking beer. <laughs> if it's fun, it means it's a noble game. Yes. Right? Could I ask a question? Yes. Jump. Um, well, you know, at this time of year, we often used to do, to do seminars, meditation seminars. At this time of year, we often used to. And we often used to sometimes do them in this no, this uh, this place, like have a Saturday or a Saturday and a Sunday with readings and meditation and blah blah blah. The reason I'm saying that is because I, <coughs> I myself am interested in the Phaedo and some of the other purif purificatory practices, and I was just kind of wondering if, <coughs> since other people here are somewhat interested too. If we want to look for a time when we might be able to have a meditation seminar. Pass a piece of paper around. Okie dokie. And well, what? what if we read the Phaedo and did it at the end of the Phaedo? Yeah. I mean, oh, I, I see. think we're reading the Damascus first, but after that. So, his, so Daniel's suggesting after we do the Damascus, we do the Phaedo and then have a seminar at the end of that. But that's, well, we used to do a, the Fido is huge. <coughs> Pass a piece of paper on people are interested in signing it. Then we know how many people are interested in it. And, uh, it's complicated, too. People, so we want a list of people who might be interested in a meditation seminar before yeah. the end of the year? Yeah. Yeah. Of some sort. Yeah, because Pierre's often good at, com com you know, the solar we can have one the at the end of the Fido, and we could have one before the end of the year. I like yeah. that idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I second the motion. December 15th or later? Is that what we're trying and to next to it, next to it, people should put how much money they want to pay. Is that key? Sorry? Because we may go somewhere, so it's giving an idea of... Yes. 
And so we'd want to, I'm sorry, what was it we put down something? Well, it could either be a day or a weekend, it depends. How much you'd be willing to pay How much you'd be willing to pay Like we often find, a, we can find a place if there's an interest. To what degree there's an interest, there must also be a financial backing for it. Okay. So... Well, such as the, the, uh, mm -hmm. the place in... Uh, Joshua Tree? Yeah. yeah. What's the name? Mental Joshua physics. Tree. Metaphysics mental Institute. Yeah, mental, mental physics. physics. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just I'm putting a column here for yeah, yeah. your name and any other information, and then a column over here if you'd be willing to pay money, what you'd be willing to pay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Assuming uh, a weekend or because uh, we have some good seminars. One fear, yeah. good fear, is going to be the fear of death. Yeah. Like whatever you've accumulated. Right in your lifetime about the idea of death. Would you not agree some people have a pretty fearful notion of death and what they may encounter? And this fear, whatever it is, is going to come, it's going to surface. Yes, absolutely. And has to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. I could think of more interesting fears. Now, does this answer the question? No. I think we're missing the whole virtue part. Pardon me? How is, what does virtue have to do with this idea of living well and the pra practice of the separation of the soul from the body? Well, that's easy. As understanding and knowing that. Is it, would one encounter see it as just? Is there any sense that in that experience you're encountering goodness? Yes. Or is it just turning on lights? Definitely, yes. Well, another word for goodness is excellence. Another word for excellence is virtue. Mm -hmm. Is not saying that the very nature of reality is just if there's goodness? Sure. And therefore? Therefore, it's an experience of the virtues. Yeah. yeah. But all virtues, according to the uh, Phaedo, are what? Are, well, they should be wisdom, right? They're, Otherwise, they're all just sham or phony virtues, right? Yeah. All the virtues are like coins, coins by which we exchange one for the one other. For the other yeah. But in, in essence, what are they? Nothing other than wisdom. Yes. No. And therefore, the, the big question always is, what is the relationship between this and this very curious word, wisdom? Is it phronesis? No? Phronesis is wisdom or Sophia? From the back row? Uh, you used the word idea, and I was wondering if that was the classical sense of the word idea or to behold or to... Yes, be, yes. Right? Because... Idea like, is to behold. Because, like, we think of idea as yeah. putting stuff yeah. in the mind yeah. modern times, right? But... Well, it's difficult. It's very difficult to get a good translation. Right? Because you, what is it you have to bring to it? Uh, if the word idea is a Greek word, and if the Greek word, if you translate it into English and don't leave it as a Greek word, what would you be saying? Is it beholding? Is this beholding? And therefore, we tend to use this word as if it were coincidental with concept, which is about as far away from that idea as you can get, mm -hmm. right. or some lowest level of using the word intellectual. Mm -hmm. right. It's a thinking thing. Mm -hmm. David? The, linguistically, there are certain uh, forms of verbs that, uh, let me see how I can put this. Um, the, uh, the, the fact that you've done something means that you're in the state. 
um, that you, you, you're, you, you're in the state of the thing you were trying to do. Uh, words like hate and no and idea. So after you've done this process, idea really means you're now in the state of having done it. And, um, which means that if there's any spin-off or any ideas or stuff like that, I don't even want to get off on that. But, uh, they would be secondary to having attained the state. No, let me uh, push that. Um, this is a saying. This is a saying. Right. See those things? That's a metaphor. Because you're not using your eyes. Right. This is. Uh, in, this is true intellect, the eye of the soul. So this is intellect, intellecting the very nature of what is intelligible. Therefore, they're not any different. Why do you say it's intellect? Because in seeing this, this admits of degrees. It can be greater and lesser. If that's true, then that variability in this experience means there's something that is capable of going deeper or more profoundly. Therefore, you can talk about this kind of thing as if it is a seeing but it's seeing with the mind. What do you discover in this experience? <coughs> you say, oh my God, hey, you know what? Ha <laughs> ha, that's me. But not the me of my everyday world. It's the most profound me. No, that's not even the most profound me. Ah, uh, mind. No sense of the self in there. Therefore, this is an experience of mind only. Now we're pushing it a level. To grasp that, that's wisdom. To be able to put that in words and experience it, that's wisdom. And uh, it's not dead. It ain't dead. It's the very essence of life. See this word essence? Since this admits of degrees, you know then that you can go deeper, turning around upon itself. That's your seal. That's what Osea means, to be able to turn around, turn around, and participate more deeply. It's an activity. Activity of the intellect, seeing more fully into the nature of that experience. Now, I read a, I have a book on my shelf, Brownbow, the, the book on the one. He did the whole book on the Parmenides. And he has in the introduction why he won't translate the word Osea in any other term than being. He said they don't mean anything else other than by being, so you can drop it. And he did, in the rest of the translation. But uh, this is essential because uh, this is what we do. We reflect on ourselves. This is a this lower case of same thing, but unfortunately maybe mixed up with how much fantasy. I know women don't get into fantasy. Men do. <laughs> Let me check if that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Far from it. Both? They do get into fantasy. I'll be done. Hmm. Sometimes ad nauseum. Ad nauseum makes me sick anyway. All you have to do is fantasize about this and see what happens. 
You're going to say, wait a minute, where does my boyfriend fit in? <laughs> or girlfriend? <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Now, Plotinus is much more involved in talking about this as on the level of experience. Plato just introduces it. So, uh, Plato, like in the, in the Parmenides, he'll lay out the structure. Plotinus will talk about the relationship between them. So, that's what he does. He brings in the level of experience into Plato. And therefore, if you want to see how this is expressed, he has several meditations. A meditation is this. He says, come on, just visualize it. Do it. Come on, you're there. Do it. And uh, Proclus, of course, has a very interesting one, whole chapter on meditation. Hmm. And what work? And what work of Proclus is? What were you uh, referring to? Platonic theology, okay. book three, I think chapter eleven, or is it book two, chapter? Well, the whole 11? basic the principle, other? yeah. <clears throat> the whole basic. But it's the same thing. It's yeah. this. It stays there. Because he has to deal with the first two or three books to get all the material he needs for this, and then he gives the meditation, which presupposes you've mastered the first couple of books before. And the master. Yeah. So, sort of going back to Daniel's original question. Um, I guess. I, I would want to raise the further question of, is it possible to die well without doing this? Without this practice? Well, now you mean dying in a different way. Yeah. Right? Now you mean physical dying. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. I imagine, um, um, yeah, some say there are people who can die nobly. No. Are there people who are full of wisdom? But that's that's not the site. This is not the ex this necessarily this experience. Yeah. Two different things. A real corollary to that question might be: Are there people who are full of wisdom who live a good life without having the vocabulary, the thinking, the flavor? Ah, answer it. Are there people who? What was it? that wisdom group up there? Where you're living mm -hmm. in wisdom? Go ahead. Um, are there people who are there? They don't have the uh, the tradition or the vocabulary That's right. of Plato. That's right. And uh, That's right. are they still practicing dying well and doing the kinds of things that you do when you hang out there? Yeah. They may try to show this in actions, but if they don't have this background, logos, then it's all in action. Show me. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Right, do it. Don't put it into words. I don't believe them. How about people who like say uh, good doing good works, not action, just like on our state, but like going out there saying I can take this wisdom and I can turn any situation into uh, a way of seeing on a higher level, uh, without you know saying okay we're going to talk about these as ideas, which guides this kind of thinking. We're just going to say okay here you are. How are you going to do it? You do the very best you can and be unburdened and enjoy the moment. Which is kind of, I'm, I'm kind of stuck in this over this Buddhist guy. Place. Yes, and, yes. And that's kind of like I'm seeing. If I were to go to the Dharma combat on Sunday, these guys would be coming from wisdom. Oh yeah, there was a big bit about him studying his koan and going through the books and stuff like that. But he'd be sitting there coming from that state without relying on anything other than just the wisdom and the, the state that comes. Yeah. You yes. know. So that's why I'm asking all these weird mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depending, you need the you need to play this game in the right tradition. <laughs> Get in the other tradition, they'll uh, worry about you, which they should do. Give them a word. 
Well, it seems like the vocabulary that was laid out and set forth happened to be laid out in the kind of culture where if a kid were listening, he'd already have, you know, heard the Iliad twice and memorized it. So these guys could teach. They could set forth okay. the whole doctrine in three or four, you know, days of tea and smoke. And um, the kids, you know, because you learned, this was your book up here. Okay. And, and, and so these guys could jump into it really fast. Sure. This is the problem of the twins. Right. This one has gone through this game. This one has done the Buddhist game. No words, only show whatever it is by action. Now they get together. Right. They're twins. They finally talk to one another. And the question is going to be, what difference did it make for him to go through what he did or for him to go through what he did and not that? What's, where, why does it make a difference? When does it make a difference? And the question is, uh, by at least understanding what is being said, is that settling perhaps some fears? Is it possibly, the big question is, does this game of understanding prepare the mind for the mind? Prepare to do it, you know, is it, is it possible, therefore, that by becoming more involved in this, it prepares the mind for the very experience? Or is it easily additive that brings about its own value? Does it even, in fact, allow a person to think that if they do encounter it, that they might try to uh, get into it more profoundly? This was a, yeah. that middle east place of intelligibility seems to be what the placements have going. They can get into it and look at it kind of like a diamond and say, oh, it refracts and it, and it affects up and down. And, and it's fun to do, and um, whereas the other guys, they don't have the intelligibility. They have the thing that they have to know because it's out there and it's an object of contemplation, and they have their own ability they bring next to it. But that kind of sounds like what Buddhists do. They don't have an oral tradition. They don't have words. Well, yeah. Okay. In all fairness, uh, most Zen joints or Buddhists would put this down. Yeah. Right, because they want to talk about it being empty. Especially if you do it really fast. Yeah. But the question is, empty of what? Yeah. But uh, another way of looking at it, um, this is the second hypothesis. Right? And beyond this, right? beyond this is the one itself, or the good itself. And the whole question, you see, in the game of Plato is, he has one and two. Like the Bhagavad Gita only has two. Buddhism only wants one. Why is it so important for Plato to say, hey, one and both? Because you're using your mind and training the mind to therefore benefit by this in two ways. One, both for itself and for society by making distinctions and being able to then pass it on. Or, for him, constitution of the soul. And you so therefore, that's right. And by the way, this is not altogether true. There are some cases that I know where Buddhists do accept in a uh, lumina a, a Divine luminosity as a genuine uh, enlightenment, it's a Kensho, or they have a problem with it. Some have problems with it. Now, a lot of them study a lot of books, so that whole thing about not no. intellectualizing stuff no. is a little bit of crap. Yeah, or I put it in terms of Buddhism. Uh, there's a very diff great difficulty between distinguishing between emptiness and jiriki because it, it's it appears to be the same thing on many levels. Spontaneous action in respect to whatever is going on, having the full 
unity of the mind, and they get older. But it's not. Prajna and Jariki are totally different things. Though one can be masked as the other, which is why they need the, the uh, roshas to say, that's, that's it, well, that's not it. That's his whole, that's his whole function. Mm -hmm. Well, some of the great roshis were saying, don't use the rock of Jariki to suppress thinking. That's not correct practice. Mm -hmm. And what would you no, say? Uh, some of the people passing as Roshis today haven't studied their own tradition. That's right. It comes from the big, long tradition that they want to maintain. Mm -hmm. no. well, from my understanding, Buddhism doesn't have a metaphysics. There's no structure of order mm -hmm. to reality. Therefore, they don't need language. So there's, there's no point in talking about it and communicating because they have no language because they have no metaphysics. Say more. Well, <clears throat> so if the two twins ever encountered each other over a cup of coffee, um, one would be interested in the dialogue and the other one would just be... That's right. Would just be. Well, well let's complicate it. <laughs> yeah. What if this dude has both one and two? He could just be as well, but he'd want to have a dialogue. <laughs> that would be one hell of a dialogue, yeah. wouldn't it? Because yeah. <laughs> he can work on his terms, but he can't work on his. Yeah. So you're basically one-handed if you're a Buddhist in that sense. It would be a lot of fun to listen. Yeah. <laughs> but certainly um, guys like uh, uh, Lin Chi you know, and um, Basui, th these are not men that didn't have anything to say, right? I mean... So I'm wondering, you know, if you put one of these guys... I mean, so right? he had nothing to say? Uh, he had things to say, right? I mean, he, he wasn't just a... Because we've been talking about the Buddhist as someone who can't have a dialogue, can't talk about what he's into. But these men had teachings, right? I mean, they, they did. They were able to talk, right? They were able, in that sense, to represent, you know, the truth that they're... Uh, uh, yes, and all because Basui... If it depends upon how you read him, but on one level he's not a Buddhist at all because he, he discovered the truth of the Dharma and that wasn't satisfied with it. Mm. And therefore he kept going on until he met Koho Zenji, if you know the story. Yes, I've read it with you numerous okay. times. Uh, all right, good. Banged his head against okay. the wall a few times. <laughs> That's it. So we didn't bring our book. So we'll get copies of it and pass it around or get it around so I can give you guys some work. Okay. Right? All right. Could everybody help put the place back in order? Last comments from anyone before we push off? No, and it's not too late for a donation. Got it. It's not too late to put your name on the list. Right here. Okay.